So yes, the next in order is going to be Malcolm. So if we look at here at the turn track, you can see Malcolm down here. He's in the back of the pack. He is located on top of Kaylee, so Kaylee will be after him. So Malcolm has some choices here. And that cowboy is way up there. So we get to do quite a bit of movement now. So I really need to figure out. I guess Mal does have the ability to heal himself in heroic. Let's see if I can find heroic Mal for you. Really need a better way to pull that swash. <laughs> That's not the right one. Uh, da -da -da, there we go. So, yeah, for two moments, it's, it counts as an action. Now, I didn't, might not have explained it, but when you look at their cards, anything that's a boost that has a plus one or a plus two, so you can see there's, on the top, it's plus two, a die to a tech, uh, a tech test. Or no, that's a negotiation test. Um, and you also, on the lower half, you have plus two, um, to shoot into a brawl if the result is disgruntled, wound the other brawler. Hmm. So that allows him to shoot while brawling, basically. But if it says plus two, it doesn't count as an action. But everything else there on his card that has just a normal two and the time symbol counts as a physical action. So right there, it says he can earn a blood for two moments. So, let's go back to the game board. I think we're going to do that and try to heal up. And unfortunately, that's going to take some time. Time that I'm not hmm, all that wanting to do. And I wonder if somebody could assist him in that action. Yeah. We need a doctor, man. <laughs> so I got to look at the back of his card and wonder if he's got a healing ability in heroic. No, but I bet you when we get the expansion and we get the doctor and the, uh, oh, what's her name? The little brunette firecracker. Anyhow, I bet he'll have a, a healing ability. That'll be cool. So let's go back to Mal. So Mal's going to go ahead and spend two moments to move two up on the, time tracker and we are going to remove one of his bloods he has three currently and then this door is open so now that we've eliminated that guy you can see there's no lock on that door and on these other doors where there's not a guard there's a physical lock so he could move into the building, and let's find out if our hostage is in there. So with a cost of one movement, he can move two. So we'll move him up one more on the time scale. I'll put him on top of Jane. And he can move... Uh, hold on, where am I at? Yeah, he can move two spaces. One, two. So that'll put him in the doorway. And now that he moves into there, um, there's an objective in there. So, that means we need to do our random draw here. Okay. Oh, and it's a five. So, uh, where's my camera? So, basically, he currently is in building four, and this is one away. So, that means we find a cargo crate and a, uh, a goon. A thug. So these are melee dudes. We'll put them off. I think we can place them wherever we want. So put them over there. And Mal will be now out, out of actions, right? So he did a move and then he did the he did the heal and the move. So he's done. So now at the end of his, end of his turn we check and do any currently waiting goons, which would be this dude here. Nobody else. Um, he can see him, so now he's going to react. So we're going to place him onto our time track. And we put the thug thing down here on top of Kaylee, and basically the thug goes next, right? So the thug, 
Um, if possible, he does a brawl, um, but it's not because he's not adjacent, so he's going to move three squares at the cost of three. One, two, three. And I have to actually stand up here. I'm actually going to get off my butt. One, two, three, and I'll put him adjacent. All right. And actually, before I do that, we do need to we need to get rid of this. So, um, since we didn't pull a four, we got to look back in the pile and pull the four out because the four does not have the hostage. And then add the one that we drew back in. It's, it's kind of confusing when you play that. Um, it's important for you to understand how that works because if we kept that out, well, now it wouldn't be an available location for the hostage and we've already picked up the objective here. See how that works. So now we're going to do a brawl action with this thug's second action. So it's a, he has a plus one skill. He gets a one dice. It costs two moments. I'll move him up. And we are now going to roll. So Mal is in heroic mode. He gets plus two. He doesn't have any anytime actions. Of another cruise result. So hopefully. All right. So the brown coat gets he totally beats him. He gets six. I'm not gonna roll again because I don't want to get a crit. This guy gets three plus ones of four. So I apply a blood to him. And I'm actually just gonna lay this blood down here on this thug because there's only one out right now. So just know he's got one wound. So that'll be the thug's turn done. And you can see where he ends up now on the uh, on the time tracker. He's up here at the 10 slot. So we got a thug and a cowboy. So we have Kaylee's going to go, then Zoe, Malcolm, whoever's below Malcolm, Jane. And then these guys are going to go. So we got to get rid of them before they got a chance to attack back at us. So now the next person's turn is Kaylee. So we go back over to Kaylee. Meanwhile, in the uh, the building with the computer terminal, our super sexy IT girl is going to hack for us, right? And she's still visible. Now I don't have to worry so much about this thug over here taking a shot at her because now he's in the initiative order. He's already on the board. So she sees him over there. She knows she's got a little pressure cooker going on, but it's not imperative that she moves and gets out of sight. So she's going to probably spend both of her actions to perform a technical test. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the next card. And this one is uh, titled Malfunctioning Terminal. So she's acting heroically. It'll cost her two moments, and she needs an eight with one dice. Ooh, if she fails, she gains a blood. Yuck. Okay, well, she needs an eight. Um, she does have somebody available to assist her. Wash is in the room. And instead of adding a die to her test, he could just give her one of his skills and do a normal assist because he's adjacent. So Kaylee already has... Kaylee has plus three naturally, plus her equipment gives her another three. She gets plus six, plus Wash... He can assist her uh, for two moments, and that'll give her a seventh. And only rolling one die might be a good thing, because two dice is going to guarantee that we end up maybe getting a crit, right? So if she rolls one, she's got plus six. She's pretty much guaranteed. Mm, boy, the math here is killing me. She needs an eight as a success. So let's do this. So we subtract six. So she needs a two. So as long as she doesn't roll a crit, she'll pass the test without using Wash's assistance. So she's going to do that. Okay. So she gets a firefly. She passes. So the success is take $300. All right, cool. So I'm going to take $300 off board. This money is going to add to our overall job reward once we finish it, depending on how well we do. I'm just going to put the money over here and remind me to add it to the bounty. 
So she successfully did that. We get rid of this card, and we perform the rule of the scenario, which is draw another counter, right? So I'm going to look away, and we're going to draw. And this says, now in this case, we're not expecting to find a hero. We're just eliminating buildings. So this is going to take out the number two building from being a possibility of where the uh, hostage is. So where is number two? Oh, number two, where are you? And I, I just, because of the angle that I'm sitting, I can't see it. So that means this must be number two. Okay. So we're going to remove the objective token from here. So we've already eliminated uh, two, three, four, and seven. So basically these two are out of the picture. Number three down here is out, but we got this large building here with a goon in front of it. This building, um, and I believe all of these up here, this whole quadrant, except for seven. So that's kind of cool. We might have to, once we clear this building, come on over this way. But we'll see. What else can she do? So now Kaylee can go ahead. Um, what that tech test cost her? Where's the card? That was a two. So I need to make sure that I move her up. That's one of the things you got to make sure you do is move after each action. One, two. And interestingly enough, every time you move, now you're changing the dynamic for who's available to assist. Well, Wash is way up here, so he could still assist. So Kaylee's going to do another tech test, right? She's going to do another tech test. Let me get over here, her die rolling area. So this time her heroic action, she needs a seven to hack. She's going to install a virus. And, oh, cool, successful. She can move any two goons, two spaces. That's cool. All right, so she's going to roll that one die again. She needs a seven for a success, but she's getting a plus six with all of her equipment and her skills. So she needs anything except for a crit. Oh, and that's off cam. Let me slide it down. So she has a two, which will be a success. So I can move any two goons to squares. So that's interesting. Do I want to move the goon that's engaged with Mal? Mal's brawl skill, um, he's got two fight. He has a higher chance of shooting, but he can also shoot while he's brawling. Shoot into the brawl if the result is disgruntled. Let me show you what I'm looking at here, sorry. Shoot into a brawl. If the result is disgruntled, wound the other brawler. Oh no, that doesn't help him. That allows him to friendly fire. If the wound result is disgruntled. I guess that means you lose. I have to look at the terminology again. Okay, so I'm trying to ascertain whether or not it's better for him to just shoot or brawl. And it looks like it's the same odds. If he brawls, he's going to he's gonna get plus two. If he shoots, he's going to get plus two. So he's just going to stay where he's at. She's not going to move him. But what we will do is move this dude two spaces over. And that's going to get him away from the door so we can actually enter that without having to deal with this dude. That's so I did not, I had to check the video, I did not pick the next one for the second test. So here we go. She's hacked in. She's installed a virus. And building number six. Okay. So we've eliminated yet another building. We need to remove the objective um, from number six. Where is it? Right here. Okay. Let me go to the overhead. So remove it from here. So pretty much all these buildings have been eliminated except for this one. And these are clear. This one's clear. We're, well, we're moving our way around. We basically have these four up here other than this building, this very large building there. So that's good news. So that was a good turn for Kaylee. Um, 
I do need to move her. Check. I'm hearing a bit of an echo. I think it's just my my uh, sound quality here. Um. Yeah. Okay, so she's heroic. He can see her, but she's already um, she's our he's already on the time track, right? So we've already established that we don't we don't activate him. He's done. Let's get rid of this. So if we look at the time tracker, and interestingly enough, Kaylee. Um, wow. Did I not move her again? Do I have to check the video again? <laughs> she, yeah, she must have not have moved that second time. So um, her tech test, that was another two spaces. One, two. Yep. So now it'll be Zoe going next. I mean, let me check the let me check the tape. Okay, so I went ahead and double checked the tape again. And yes, I forgot to move her that second time. So Kaylee is here on the time track. The next person to go will be Zoe. So we need to take a look at how Zoe can benefit us this turn. Uh, to, to do one, two, three, she'd have to move. I believe that you can combat I can combat him what I'm trying to figure out is uh, right here one two she doesn't have enough to move through in here but I think she can fight through the doorway at that dude there Now she wouldn't be able to shoot because he would uh, he wouldn't be in line of sight, but once she's here, I believe she's considered in the doorway. I know she could fight another dude there, so would you be able to fight diagonally? I would think you could. Yeah, we're gonna do it. So we'll go ahead and move Zoe up. Zoe's acting heroically as well. Um. And actually, she can only move two in her heroic, and it cost her one moment. Interestingly enough, it looks like they they move a little faster, and it's not as expensive on the timeline when you're heroic. So that's kind of a neat thing to think about when you're trying to balance not using too much time. So she did that for one. So now she's going to perform um, on her card, her brawl action. Cost her one moment. So let's move her up. Top of Kaylee, and yeah, she's got a three fight skill. So she gets a plus three to her attack. We're gonna do an opposed roll. So the brown one's her. She gets a plus three, and actually, if Mal had it on his his card, he could assist. But he doesn't have that a bit that ability, so he can't. All right, so the goon rolled a critical fail anyway. We rolled a four; it's totally a success. And this thug is now dead. And actually, oh, I just realized what I screwed up earlier. So when he dies, and I made a mistake last time when I removed the cowboy, I was supposed to put a dead body marker. So now we put a corpse token where that dude was. Actually, I need to pick this up and look in here, make sure I got the objective out. I'm pretty sure, yeah. That's the problem with trying to sit and do these little boxes. <laughs> it's not easy. So there's a corpse token. So. Technically, there's still a corpse. Uh, where was that dude that we killed? I think he was originally um, right here, right? So we'll put the corpse token right there. So the reason for this corpse token is if is if a waiting 
goon sees this corpse to to token, they will activate. So right now, nobody else can see that corpse token anyway. We got a, got a goon all the way over here. We got goons over there, but that this corner of the building is blocking them from seeing that corpse token. So that's out of sight. But what you're going to have to do is sometimes pick up that corpse token and throw it in the building so that way you don't activate the other goons. That's the mechanic there. It's pretty cool. So anyhow, um, back to Zoe. She went ahead and knocked that dude out. And she is done for her turn. So now back to Malcolm. Um, if we look at the turn order. Malcolm's next. He's in the building, and there's a cargo crate in there. So... I think it's a free action to pick up the cargo crate. Not a hundred percent on that. So let me just give me a second. This video is going to be so long anyway; it's not going to matter. Um, bad equipment crates are unlocked. Open a crate. Must be standing next to it. Flip over the token. Yeah, it's it's not an action. So first thing he wants to do is find out what's in. Oh, but he's not next to it, is he? Yeah, he's one away. So he's going to have to spend an action to move over. Um, and in Heroic, that'll cost him one. So I'll move him up one. Time track. And he's going to flip over. <laughs> These things are a little, a little clunky. It's almost like you need to magnetize them or double stick tape them down so they don't move. Okay, so he finds five, uh, $500. Let me get you a better view on that $500 token on the crate. So we're just going to actually stick that over here by our 200 that we've already found. So that's going to increase our job reward. That'll be more money for Serenity. We're going to need some fuel to fly out of this dust bowl. So now, let me take a look at what we got going on. Mal's still got an action left. We know that there's no objective here. There's no reason to go there. So, I think the deal here is he's going to go ahead and spend two moments. Um, one, two, to act casual. And by doing that, I just went past the point on the board where I realized I forgot to do my special event when Wash moved up. So we'll do we'll we'll pretend it didn't happen. We'll do that now. And when the special event happens, basically we lose a blood. And then we have to make a roll on our chart here. So I need to remove the blood. And that goes to our friend that we're trying to save. And we roll. Okay, I get a you can't see that. I got a four. We look on the chart. Enough already. Place an alert thug in the building closest to the crew who triggered the event. Out of sight. Remove the wound, the wound token from this space. Okay. So we did that already. We removed the wound token. And that uh, That's one wound now that's going to be on our hostage. So if we take too much time, he's going to bleed out, basically. Um, and now we got to take a thug and place it, it said out of sight. So if I put him in the building, we're going to place him right here. And it did say next to him, right? Well, let me double check this. In the building closest to the crew who triggered the event. Out of sight. Well, that means we're going to place this dude over here because that building's closer and that's where he goes. Normally it would happen, you'd be outside, right? And then you just stick him in a building. But in this case, I can't put him in the building with Mal because then he's, then he's in line of sight. So they want it to be bad, but not, you know, horribly bad. So we are going to continue... What's going on? There we go. So the next person in the turn order is Jane. So Jane, what you gonna do, pal? Um, hmm. 
well, first things first, I think he's going to spend two moments to act casual. We need to go back to casual mode because we're eliminating possibilities of where the hostage is located. We don't want these other dudes to trigger on us. So he's going to act casual and then he's going to spend two moments to move one, two, three up there and he's going to reveal this. Oh, and you're off camera. Sorry. So he moved one, two, three and he's going to reveal this lock token, which in order to unlock the door, I have to do a fight test and get a six. It'll cost two moments. He's out of actions, though. He did the revert back to casual mode and then a move. So he can perform that next turn because he's a pretty good fighter, right? He's going to check out this building and find out if the hostage is there. Nice. Okay. Um, so actually, the move takes him up on the time track. Two more spaces. All right. And now we go to Zoe. Right, you see Zoe there in the green. So Zoe Zoe, Zoe, Zoe. I think Zoe is gonna do this she's gonna follow suit with what Jane did. So she's gonna spend two moments to go to casual. Now we don't reactivate the event, right? It only happens once. put the gray figure on and then um, I'm actually oh hold on I totally screwed the pooch here so they can't go casual because they're wounded right so we have to back up a second here we have to come back to Jane's turn uh, he was right here and well we already know what that is but that's fine um, he wanted to spend two to go casual, um, but he can't because he's he's bleeding. So anytime you've got blood on your character, you can't switch from heroic and go back to casual. That's something that, look as you can see, is easy to screw up, but at least I caught it moments later. Um, yeah, and he doesn't have the ability to heal. So he's pretty much stuck in heroic mode. That is not good, my friends. So because of that, we're going to completely change what he's going to do. That's weird. So like when Jane starts getting wounded, I mean, he, he takes five hits, but there's no way for him to heal. Um, wow. Wow. And I'm not, and maybe there's a piece of equipment. Yeah, there's like a first aid kit. Interesting. All right. So Jane is stuck in heroic mode because <laughs> he got hurt. So he's a big baby. Um, I don't want to run down here because there's two, two goons down here. And I got one building to get into. So sending somebody over there to beat everybody up is not the answer. So I think the answer is going to be to have Jane spend four moments to move eight spaces, which is just a combination of his move, which is two moments for four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And he'll move into here. And that thug's going to see him. Um, and that'll keep actually Jane in the same spot on the time track to fix my mistake I made. But... Now, this dude who wasn't activated, you know, I wonder when he was, he is now activated. So, I need to find another thug token. Did we kill the thug from before? I guess we did. Okay. So, the thug token goes all the way in the back, atop of Kaylee. And the thug's going to go next, basically, if you look. So the thug got activated just now because he sees a heroic character, which is Jane. 
and I need to put him back to heroic. I'm just screwing the pooch on this always to Sunday. So this is a melee character. He's going to move three spaces to get close. And then with his second action, he's going to go ahead and brawl. So he has a plus one to his fight. And Jane has plus three. Hmm. He could spend two moments to add an extra die if he wanted. Yeah, let's do that. Jane's going to spend the buff to add an extra die. All right. Didn't need it anyway. The guy failed with a crit. So that will be a blood on that thug. So I put a blood down over here on his thug token. Thug token. So that'll be the thug's turn. And the thug attacked and he moved. So we need to make sure we move him properly. So for his move, it was a th one, two, three, and then the attack. Oh, okay. So he's actually going to get to go before Jane. So someone's going to have to bail him out. And this over here is locked. This door over here is locked. That's a bummer. So that means pretty much that Mal... And where is Mal? Is he underneath Zoe? Yeah. I guess Zoe could run over there and help, but she's kind of slow, actually, in heroic mode. Hmm. Mal is, too. I think they're almost all out of... One, two, three, four, five. I need, I need six to get there. You know what? I'm I'm not. Jane is going to be able to take out that thug, right? He could spend more time. He could roll two dice. He's got he's got the odds in his favor. He should be able to take him out. The thug is going to hit him twice, but the thug might not survive past one action. So we're going to leave that alone. Kaylee is next. Uh, here in the job, I don't even know what to call this thing, the time sequence bar. <laughs> um, so she's next. So we're going to repeat what we've been doing. She's over here in the control room. She's going to spend two actions, or no, she's going to grab her tactics card. So she's going to do a tactics test. Draw the card. Dismantling the access point. Ooh. Well, she has a heroic where oh, she has to use her brute force and get seven. Ugh. Well, she could use Wash to help, and he's got... Mm, he's got one fight, so she'll get a plus one. He could also burn three more moments to give her an extra die, which she might need. So I think we're going to do that. So this is kind of complicated. Let's double check how we're going to do this. So Kaylee has to spend two just to perform the test. Oh, he can't assist because he's he's not available. He's covered up by the thug. Damn it. All right. She has to roll really well or spend... And she doesn't have any blood, so she could do it. All right. So what she... Uh, I wonder the order of this. Like, doing a tactics test, I drew the card. All right. Let me well, do I did a my rule check. check. And basically, once you draw the card, you must perform one of these two actions. And it does count as an action for your turn. So having her take an action to act casual... Wouldn't be fair. So she could perform this other one. I would have had to have done that ahead of time to know. So, and the interesting thing here is that, like, if you're acting heroic, you can do a casual action. But if you're casual, you can't, you can't do a heroic and a casual, right? Um, she's currently heroic, so she... Oh, I just answered my question. She can do the casual. Um, but it'll take more time. So it's going to cost her four to do this technical challenge, and that's what she's going to do. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, move her up on the timeline. 
And she, remember, she has plus six because of all of her stats. Um, and we're not going to utilize, well, we can't utilize Wash because he's not available. So she's going to roll one dice. And as long as she doesn't get uh, a critical, it'll be a pass because she gets plus six. Okay, there we go. So, oops, wrong screen. So she got a two, plus her six, gives her eight. She passes the seven that's needed. So she gets the success. So she, visible heroic her crew, may move up to three spaces. Right? That's kind of cool. So who do we want to give that buff to? Hmm. So we're going to give that over here to Zoe. Um, and she's visible through the door. She's in the doorway, right? So she can move up to three spaces. One, two, and you can't cut corners when you're moving, so she has to move out one like that. So that'll give her a pretty big move buff, and she'll be able to get into the building with one action to check this out to find out this last building in this corner actually has uh, our hostage. And, you know, odds are they're, it's either going to be here or over there, and it's going to suck because we've got... We got two goons, two goons down there, and two goons up over here. He's hard to see. He's tucked in over there. So that was Kaylee's first action, right? She was successful. Now we need to figure out what room that she's eliminated, right? Because she did the. She gets an intel token. So we grab one of these. Room ten, building ten. Okay. Where's building 10? Up, oh, and so it's that large building that I had her moving toward. We just got some intel that, hey, the hostage is not in building 10. All right. I guess that no harm, no foul. So we should only have three tokens remaining. Oh, I've got four in here. What's going on? Oh, four. We got this one here. One, two, three, four. Those are the remaining buildings where the hostage must be. So that's actually really good news because these two goons here, um, we're going to try very hard not to activate them. And yeah, I think they'll be out of sight even if we get up over here. <laughs> so we're going to be very casual and just kind of stroll up into this area once we locate which room it is and be out of sight from these two dudes down here. That's going to be cool. That's nice because that's going to keep them from shooting at us. And everybody seems to be pretty beat up. I'm not sure we can handle any more blood. So Kaylee actually has another action available. So she's going to do another tech check. She draws a card. Video feed access. All right, well, that's interesting. So I draw the right card, yeah. So this one doesn't actually, it has two casuals on it. So one is shorter, only takes uh, two, but it's a skill she's not good at, which is negotiation. Or four to get a nine or better. So obviously we're gonna do the more expensive one. One, two, three, four. And that's probably gonna be it for Kaylee. She. Well, not really. I don't think we're going to be able to get all the way over there on this one segment, but we'll try to hold her back for a while. We don't want her rounding the corner if we can help it. So she needs to get a nine or better with that uh, loop the feed hack. Okay. So one dice test for her. She gets plus six. Um, so really she needs a three or better? Hmm... So should, I think she's going to spend one, two, oh, I don't want to do that. Damn it. Let's just, let's just roll it out. She gets plus six to the roll. So, I mean, come on. <laughs> so she gets a two. She gets plus six to the roll. Um, damn. So. That's a fail, but we do have some options here. Let's take a look at them. Um, 
Like she could ignore the critical, which isn't the case. So she can't add another die to the test because she's already rolled. Um, but one thing I'm thinking about is Mal has this ability with his, uh, here we go, his plastic dinosaurs. Reroll any one die of another crew's tech test. May be done at any time as long as the crew with a dinosaur is available. Oh, wouldn't you know it? Mal is not available. He is currently covered up on the time track by, I guess, that thug. Or is he underneath Zoe? Yep, he's underneath Zoe. Zoe can't help, so nobody can help her. Uh, Malcolm, or Wash, Wash is covered up too. He could have helped her. And I would have just done that at the beginning. So anyhow, we're just going to treat that as a failure. It says, exhaust one piece of equipment and act heroic. Oh, that's horrible for her. So she has to choose between one of her pieces of equipment. And it's going to be this one. Ugh, that sucks. There, hold on. Exhaust. So I think she just taps the card. She can't use it anymore. Ooh, you pain in the butt. What are the odds of such a horrible roll? But it was close to a 50-50. And I got it. Because I roll like that. <laughs> it's probably because I rolled the white die. I should have rolled the brown coat. See? See, look at that. All right, so now we look at the time track. It's Zoe's turn next. The good news is we've got it down to four buildings. Zoe's around the corner. She was going to look at this building here. But since then, Kaylee said, hey, that building does not contain our objective. So she's going to, I guess... Oh, and remember, I can't move her to casual. I forgot to change her figure. Because she's got blood. She has to stay heroic. All right. Oh, that's really bad. Oh, man. I'm telling you guys, when you play this game, I challenge you not to make any mistakes. <laughs> because everything is so... There's a lot of rules, right? And everything is dependent on the other thing. So, obviously, when she was heroic, I forgot to change her miniature. Kaylee had the ability during her test to move her up here to get into this building. Had I seen that this thing was, uh, that I was heroic, I wouldn't have done that. So, I'm moving it back. Because if I put it there, then this dude would have woken up. He would have stopped waiting. He would start shooting at her. That's the last thing I want to do, right? So anyhow, we're going to not do that bonus move that was granted through the successful tech test that Kaylee did. And we're going to keep her there. So now Zoe is going to heroic Zoe is going to spend two moments to go ahead and heal this last blood of hers. So one, two, Top of the cowboy. So I went through all that, but then we're just going to exchange your figure out now to casual. That's fine. And now, flip her card over. One thing I've been bad at so far is when I'm changing the figure, I'm not... The heroic and casual thing is really starting to drive me bonkers. All right. And it's because if they're bloody, they can't switch over, right? So basically, everybody's heroic except for Wash and Zoe. Mainly because of blood. Now, Zoe just went ahead and she, she healed and then she's going to spend two more moments to flip this over and act casual. So it's interesting to note, it costs you time to go casual. I guess because you got to get your wits about you. But when you go from casual to heroic, and you get all worked up, you go into punch face mode, it's free. So that'll be Zoe's turn done. So now we look at the time track, and Malcolm is next. Um, 
Malcolm is acting heroically. So Malcolm, it looks like he's going to spend four just to heal himself. Right? Two moments to heal one blood. So he's going to do two in a row. One, two, three, four right on top of Zoe. And that's it, but he's still going to be stuck in heroic mode. Hmm. All right, and this is taking valuable time to do this healing but and switching over, but it has to be done. So next we have the cowboy, um, which is now dead. So he actually should have been removed from the time track. Because basically the only active character we have in here is the thug. So actually, yeah, it'll be the thug next. So the thug is going. Um, remember, he has he has one wound on him, and he's going to try to take a fight, uh, a brawl action here against Jane. So he's rolling one die, the thug, and he gets plus one. Jane's rolling one die. Hmm. But Jane could uh, plus two moments to add a die to his brawl if he wanted. Looking at his card, that doesn't count as an action because it's got a plus. It's a boost. So do I really need to do it? He already has plus three to his plus one. I already have an advantage. But I think I'm going to go ahead and do it. Jane's going to move two up on the timeline to ensure his victory here. As long as he doesn't roll crit. God damn it. <laughs> All right. Well, he crits, and so does the other guy. So that's interesting. Um, Malcolm is now available. So Malcolm, going back to that... Uh, Plastic Dinosaurs card. Malcolm could spend two moments to allow Jane to re-roll that die. And, yeah, we're going to take advantage of that in this scenario. So, Malcolm spends two moments to come on up. I'm going to do some assisting here. And, yeah, Jane's like, thank you. Okay, so he gets a five. So he totally beats him. And you can see how we get some dice mitigation going on there. So this thug already had a wound, so he's gone. Sayonara, sucker. And yeah, no more thug on the time track. So let's remove that there. You know, sorry for my, my shaky cam. I'm, I'm trying to get you something in between, you know, constantly being held by the hand and shooken constantly. It's very, you know, dramatic, and I can get in and show you things up close, and but it's very, it's just nerve-wracking. It's hard for me to watch, you know, any for an extended period of time. So I got the best of both worlds. I got the static cam, but I, at any moment, I can kind of like pan in, move around, zoom. So sorry if it gets a little shaky. But anyhow, so that was Jane's turn. Or was it? No, that was the thug's turn. So the thug went. Now we go to the back of the turn order and we got Wash. So it's been a while since Wash has been able to go. Now looking at Wash, remember he's not very good at his technical abilities. <sighs> to attempt it, he only gets a plus one. He can spend three moments. And I don't think he's going to do that. I think this is the time where he needs to start getting his, moving his way on out. So... For two moments, he can move three squares. One, two, three. One, two, three. He's going to go ahead and move on out. We're going to start moving our way down the road because we know that the hostage is over here somewhere. So he's a support character. He's going to put himself in a position to see everybody in this area so he can add some support. So that'll move him up four on the time track. All right, one, two, three, four. So now we go to Zoe. So Zoe 
can move three in casual. So that's going to put her one, two, three, right next to this lock token. So this costs two moment. Let me move her first for her move. So one, two. And it'll cost her two to unlock the building. And it's a fight test, which she'll end up with a plus two in casual. All right, so we're gonna roll this test. She could use wash. Oh, she needs a six. She could use wash to assist and he would aid, oh, but he has to spend more time to do it. Um, he's not close enough for her to assist. He'd have to be adjacent and he's actually away from the door. We're just going to roll it out and hope for the best. And it spins and it's a critical fail. So she does not unlock the door. So her turn's done. She wastes um, two moments. Try to unlock the door. And I don't know how we're going to do this. We're, we're taking way too much time. Uh, all right. So that's Zoe's turn done. Jane will be next. Jane, he's in her uh, heroic mode. Heroic, heroic mode. So stand up here. One, two, three. He moves four in heroic. So four, he could be outside the building. Then he can move again. One, two, three, four, and be close for the assist. So that's what he'll do. He'll be adjacent. And he, that'll move him up four on the time track. Up. Oh, that puts us right up to our event. So our hostage is bleeding out. And now we have to roll for the event to see what happens. And it's a three. Um, the crew who passed the, st the star must act heroic. Well, he already is. Remove the wound token. If this hostage has been found, place the thug as a reinforcement. Nope. All right. However, we do have an issue here. Because remember, he can't go to casual, which is why he's just kind of running around in heroic mode. Oh, hold on a second. We're not going to do that with this guy. We are going to stop, I guess, keep him in the building. Because remember, we're trying to be like low key. We're trying to come work our way down, find this hostage. So Jane's going to stay here because he's all revved up. And he can't heal. So I can't really bring him out in the open. Otherwise, everybody's going to trigger on him. So that'll actually, he's going to do nothing with his second turn. So that'll save him two moments. So basically, the event never got triggered. I put the blood back up there. Okay. All right. So that'll be Jane's turn done. So now on the term track, you can see Malcolm's next. So now Mal spent an entire turn healing up. So now he's going to go ahead and spend two moments to turn himself into casual mode. One, two. And then he's going to spend two more moments, I guess, to move. One, two. All right. And we've already rolled for the event, so we're going to leave it at that. We rolled the three. Um, but unfortunately, hold on, what did, what did, I'm lost here. So he spent two to go casual, then he wanted to move. So he moves to get out. 
And I'm not going to change the figure because the event causes him to go back to heroic mode. <laughs> so, luckily, he was out of sight of everybody anyway. Maybe. Yeah, no, that's, that's corner to corner. That's not going to cut it. Sorry about the bump. All right. So that'll be Mal's turn done. Our hostage is bleeding out. We are now on our third turn segment, time segment. And Kaylee is next. We are going to continue Kaylee's turn. All right? Remember, we pretty much eliminated most of the close... Uh, threats that were involved. Yeah. Um, so Kaylee is going to continue doing a lot of what she previously was doing. She is going to perform. Kind of wondering if I should put her in casual mode. We have one, two, three, four buildings left where our hostage is going to be located. So she can eliminate two of these on her turn. I think she's going to stick with her heroic mode for now. Yeah. Yep, yep. So we'll do that. I think she's going to start with her tactics test. She's going to access the terminal that she's at right now. And she gets secure area. Okay. So these are both casual. And they cost three moments. One uses negotiations. The other one is tool. So she's going to hack the terminal. She needs an eight or better. And remember she gets, well, it changed because her one card got discarded or uh, tapped. So now she only gets plus two. So now she gets plus five total between her skill card and her equipment. I'm wondering if maybe I should add another die plus five and she needs an eight so five minus so she needs if she gets a three she's good so if she gets anything but a one or two I'm not oops sorry about that missed my video get this back up and running Stupid camera. For some reason, it has to like be in record mode to pump out HDMI video. I don't know. I don't get it. So, hmm, an extra die would definitely make it happen. She has to add two more moments, so it would be a five moment deal. Um, we're not going to do it. Three moments is enough, and I got her doing two actions. So we're gonna we're gonna hope that we get a decent roll here. Here we go. Okay, she gets a four. So that'll be a pass. Um, totally a pass, right? Four and five is nine. So she she beat it by two. So her success is that it cost um, one less moment. Cool. So instead of it costing three, it only costs two. So that'll put her on top of Zoe. And then we need to grab another random token. So we are eliminating this next building, and that's building eight. So that'll be this one here. We'll take the objective out of it. And that's good because there was a thug or a, uh, a cowboy there. So cool. All right. Well, she's going to go ahead and grab another card with her second action. This one is called Damaged Source Box. Okay, so uh, a Heroic was probably the way to go. They both are value seven, uh, seven target. So only two moments. Um, yeah, let's do that one. So she's gonna stick with her plus five using her reprogrammer and her three from her skill card or from her character card. So she needs a two or better. 
right? So we'll stick with that. There we go. So that's a pass. So her success, um, all casual crew may move two spaces. Wow, that's pretty big. So let's take a look. We have two casual people right now. Can go two spaces, so um, uh, maybe we'll move him up to. And I think I'm gonna leave Zoe there because she's gonna inspect that room. Maybe. Okay. Well, now we got to go ahead and grab and eliminate another room. So we're totally getting down. Number nine is done. Okay. So this room. Go back to the overhead for you. Oh, you're on the overhead. So remove the objective here. So all we have left are rooms one and nine. That's this room and that room. Hmm. All right. And the numbers are so far apart that that means if I pick the wrong one, if I just take a look in there. The building will just be empty. I'm not going to spawn another melee dude, another thug. So that's a pretty good deal. Okay. So I do need to move Kaylee up. Um, what was that card? Two more moments. Switch cams. So Kaylee comes around the bend. Remember, we already did this event. So hopefully we can finish before we hit this next tile, uh, which would be the fourth segment, which is over here. That way we can get a decent payout for the job. That's what I'm hoping for. So now it looks like Jane is next in the turn order. And Jane, remember, he's heroic and he can't seem to heal himself. He doesn't have the equipment to do it. So he's kind of just hiding, but we should at least move him, right? So let's take a look. His character card, He's uh, he moves four when he's heroic for two, move, uh, two moments. So we'll move him up two, and we're going to go one, two, three, right around this corner here. Jane's hanging out right there, right off cam, right around the corner. Oh, actually, no, I don't want to move him there because this dude over there will see him. So maybe if I put him there, Bill's going to see him. If I go four, then he'll be seen that way. Man, I guess he's just going to have to hang out in there. Because it's very important. I don't want to alert these two dudes over here. Jane's right here, right? So all the way down, they, they can see him. And I didn't get rid of those guys, so I kind of have to act covertly. And now remember, he can move four, so he'll be able to get in the action pretty quick. He'll be able to come out of this building, run down this back alley, and at least target this goon over here. He may end up with cover because of the corner of this building, but... Yeah, so be it. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Might be better if he aggroes to him anyway, and I can pull this guy away. But before we do that, we want to look in this building here because that might we might get lucky. We got a fifty percent chance we're going to pull the right tile from here, and it's going to say number one on it. And once we do that, um, we found the hostage. Yep, and then we got to escape, get to the helipad. Doop to do, and actually that might be a little harder because now that I haven't eliminated these two guys, it's going to make our escape a little bit more harrowing. But everybody's somewhat healed up except for Jane. So I think Jane is going to do an action that's called a wait. And when you wait, you basically can move anywhere in the turn order, no further than one from the lead. So he's going to. Come up here and wait, and then he's going to waste his, his next action. Okay, so then we go to wash, and 
actually wash could. Hmm. Yeah. Wash and Zoe are a pretty good pair. So I think what Wash is going to do, and I'm right off to the right of your screen, Wash is going to go ahead and spend two moments to move three, one, two, three, getting him close to the lock token. And then he's going to do a test here that takes two moments to unlock the door. So first let's do the two for the move. And then he's going to two attempt this lock test. And he needs, he needs a six or better. Um, but Zoe is available to assist. That's going to cost her two moments. She moves up. And when she assists, she's going to give him uh, a plus two because of her two fight. See right here. Two moments to assist and then the two for the fight. So he already has one himself. So he's going to have a basically a plus three to this roll. Meaning he needs three or better on this dice roll. Okay, so we got hit me later anyway this is a six so he successfully unlocked the door yeah he rolled a six he's unlocked the door and serenity was what I was trying to think of so this door is now unlocked that was as a success we can get rid of this lock token and I'm trying to remember now if he gets to move through that door for free once he unlocks the door and do a real check. Okay, so yeah, basically we have to spend an action to do the unlocking of the door. So he did a move and unlocked the door, but it doesn't cost you any movement to move through a door. And that's that same old rule where um, the square right behind the door is the same as the square in front of the door. So basically for free, he can kind of peek his head in since the door is unlocked and see what's there. So we know there's an objective in there. We're going to shake this up and grab it. We got a 50-50 here and we got it. Okay, so we find the hostage. Well, it's about time. We had a 50-50 chance, right? So let's double check our, our scenario booklet. When the building's uh, number, the token matches the building, you found the hostage. Place a body token under, under the objective token and place three thugs next to the hostage. Remove all remaining objective tokens. All crew in this building must act heroic. Dude. Okay. Because he's going to go heroic. And now we're going to activate cowboys. And actually, this thug's here. He moves over that way. That one can't move there. Okay, so first let's do the attack. So that thug is gonna move. Let me put him on the board in the end of the, and she doesn't have a brawl on anyway. <laughs> a brawl on, yeah. All right, so we got a firefly versus his five. So totally, we, we did that, we knocked him. We beat him in that brawl. So we gave him one blood. And he did a move and an attack, so his turn's done. So now this other thug is going to move over right behind, and this thug's coming over there. They're too far away to get in there. They went out the locked door, so they'll come this way. Um, and they can see him because he's basically in the as well in the doorway. Look, there they are. Get them. <laughs> so this cowboy is going to move, I believe it's six, to try to get into range. No, he spends two moments, but he's going to get activated. One, two, three. Now I gotta find a cowboy thing, and I'll put that um, on top. And then he's gonna one, two, three, oh, one, four, five. He's still out of range, so that's good news for him. He'll move three more. Then this other guy down here is gonna do the same thing, and I gotta put another token on the time track for him. He's gonna activate. He's going to go one, two, three, one, two, three. So everybody's awake. 
which it doesn't matter because like the jig is up, right? We have found the hostage. So now we need to clear out, um, we need to clear out these thugs that, that's in the building, I believe. We might actually be able to move the body from where we're at through the door. Uh, probably gonna have to do some extensive rule checking to check that out, but I'm pretty sure you can. Because I know if there was a body here, oh, my hand's blocking, if there was a body here, um, which is diagonal to the door, you would think, you can move it into the building. So it goes without saying that I could move it out of the building. But let me just double check to see if I can do that while the thugs are there. Maybe it's a special rule. Um, so, okay, so we went ahead, we activated this guy and that guy. And unfortunately, I don't think... I think he can see him too. Damn it. They all can see him. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This guy here is going to go one, two, three, and move in range. And he'll be four away. So this guy here is going to shoot at Wash. So he's four away. He needs a four on a 1d6 roll, basically. And Wash isn't going to get any cover. Yeah, there's nothing he can really do. Looking at his character card right here. Now, he's at the mercy of what this guy rolls. So he rolls a four, and plus one is five. So that's a hit. Damn. So Wash is going to take a blood. Um, and I need to flip his card over. Another way to remind you that, that, that you have to stay heroic when you have blood is the fact that in the casual side there's no hit points all right so he takes a blood luckily this guy let's see was the third cow uh, third ai to go he moved and shot so this guy way over here he's gonna move one two three He's going to be out of range, so he's going to move again. One, two, three, like that. So these guys come a-running. <laughs> and the jig is up. So now, now we're going to have to get nasty. So now it's time to let Jane un unleash the Jane. Unfortunately, all he has is a holdout pistol, so... Yeah. And one thing I didn't do was actually move these these cowboys that just went. So what are they? Two to move and three to shoot. So the one did one, two, one, two, three. And then the other ones moved twice. So they're right behind them. All right, so that's where we stand on the turn order. As a matter of fact, just to make things easier, I'm gonna go ahead and shift this back down to this number two position. Damn it. But we know the order of things. Okay. Fill in screen. Yeah. Okay. So Zoe is next. These things are a little fiddly when you're trying to do everything on camera. Um, all right, well, we have lots of options here. I'm wondering, Zoe has, she's casual. So the first thing she's going to do, um, as far as Zoe's concerned, is Zoe is going to go, going to go um, heroic mode. And that's for free. And I, don't know, I might just start shooting. Everybody's going to have a shot at him before, before I go to leave. Okay, so just checking some rules here. And basically, what I was fearing is true. 
So one thing that is a little clunky, and I think it just has to be that way, it's the whole doorway thing. So you can fight with somebody from outside the building, but only in the square that is straight ahead from it. So you can't move from the diagonal into there. You have to come through. So I'm not sure. I guess you can't fight. You can only fight if you're like standing right where it washes. So she she can't really help him out. So I think she's going to focus her two actions on just shooting. Remember, she turned heroic for free. So now we're just going to maximize my fire and take a look at after Zoe, we have Kaylee and Malcolm. And then Wash again. And Jane. Yeah. Jane's going pretty last. I wonder if I screwed up and forgot to move Wash again, but maybe I didn't. Um, so, yeah. Zoe is going to go ahead and take a shot at this dude. He's three away, so all she needs is a three or better. And she has a plus three to her roll. So she pretty much can't miss. Um, her revolver takes two moments. But I could spend an additional moment to get an extra fight symbol, which doesn't really help me because I've already got a plus three. Um, and he's only, and I only need a three, so I pretty much can't miss unless we roll the uh, unless we roll the critical fail. And Malcolm's not available either to help for the re-roll, so I don't know. Even even if I could add an extra die, I don't think I would want to. Yeah, so let's go ahead and roll this up. Okay, she gets a five, so it puts the end of that drama. <laughs> I'm like, what's, what's going to happen? So she puts a blood on him. And there's so many dudes on the board right now, I think I'm just going to put it right by their bases. At least for the Cowboys. So that was one shot, and so she will shoot again. Same guy, and she gets a six. An exploding six that I don't need to roll again. But she's going to take this guy out. These, All of them have two wounds. So he's down. And that means I could remove... Uh, I could remove him from, from the timeline. Okay. Now, that'll be Zoe's turn down. I have to move her. She did two moments for each... Action. One, two, one, two. Okay. So that puts her before the thug. That's nice. That's kind of cool. That'll work out for her. Um, and actually, I think I forgot to add these other two cowboys. Right? Because there's four of them total. So I just got rid of one. This is getting a little wacky. It, like I said, it can be a little clunky. I'm going to put them all in the same spot because they basically all went right after they saw Wash. And except for the, well, this dude up here, uh, the one under, I think there's two of them are there that didn't shoot because it was less to just move. Okay. So now that was Zoe's turn done. And let me switch you back over to the close cam. Look at this timeline a little closer. So Kaylee's next. We don't really need her to do what she's been doing, but there's not much she can do except technical tests, right? Like she could pop out. But I think she's just going to stay put right now because she's only got three wounds. And I don't really see how she can help out the uh, the crew right now. She's really a support character. And she doesn't have her Kaylee wrench, which gives her the ability to smack people around. She's got no weapons. So 
Yeah, I mean, she could assist if there was a brawl, but she doesn't even have a brawling weapon. Um, damn. So, yeah, Kaylee, I guess, is going to do that wait action. So she'll move forward here, and then she'll waste her remaining action. That's where she'll be done. So we'll head over to Malcolm. So Malcolm can draw a bead to this dude here. Um, but I think this guy here is going to get cover. He's seven away. So that's kind of rough. Mal has four wounds. Hmm. So Mal's going to go one, two, and that takes him two moments to move. He's, or one. Kind of slow. Um, and then he's going to go ahead and take this shot. One, two, three, four, five away. He, it'll take two moments. And it'll take two moments and he gets a plus two to the roll. Hmm. So there's not much he can do to improve this roll. He's just not as good at shooting. All right. Let's just roll it up. Figure it out. <laughs> So he got the disgruntled, he got the critical fail. All right, so he takes a shot at this cowboy and misses. So he's done. That took him two more. So that moves him up two on the timeline. So now we go back to Wash. Wash and Jane, and I'm not sure we're going to be able to eliminate everybody before these guys start taking a beating on us. So, Wash doesn't really have anything. I mean, he can brawl, and that's about all he can do. Um, and he can brawl with this guy on the other side of the door. You can see him in a little purple guy right here. This door is open. So, he could brawl, and then maybe... And I think he's got one wound on him anyway. So, he could brawl... And then run away. which I think, or he's kind of fast if we look at his stats. Um, so for one movement, he can move that heavy object. All right, so I think, let me grab the corpse token. I think that's what we're gonna do. So he's going to grab, Wash has four movement points for two moments in heroic. So he's going to grab and put it adjacent to him, which is one square. And that's for one movement. So then he's going to move here for two. Then he's going to move the corpse right ahead of him for three. Then he's going to move here for four. And all that took him basically two moments. One, two. So now he's going to move up one. Move this guy over here for two. Then he's going to go three. And then four like that. Now if he gets wounded, it's actually going to go onto our hostage. Um, and our hostage only has basically three blood left. So he has the one blood that's on our third time segment, and then one on the fourth and one on the fifth. So basically every time Wash gets hit, yeah. Um, matter of fact, let me double check that. So the hostage may not fight. Yeah, so it's best to only keep one person next to him. I'm not sure Wash is the guy to do it, but it is what it is. And so now these guys are kind of out of range a little bit. 
that was a pretty good move for me to move him behind this building because these guys will have to come forward. And she's actually, I need to change her mini. Remember, she's heroic. Switched for free. Everybody's heroic now. Um, and everybody's activated, so they're in the turn order. So that would be Wash's turn done. So now we're going to head over to Jane's turn. And Jane's been itching to get into the, into the action. So he can spend two moments to move four. So he can go one, two, three, four. And dang. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's nine away. And all he has is the holdout pistol right here. Um, Oh, for two moments, he can actually spend an action and move the dude closer. He gets a plus three on his roll. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He needs a nine. Really wish I could have. He's better off targeting somebody else, even if this guy, this cowboy gets to go and take a shot twice. Um, move back over. This cowboy down here gets to shoot twice at Wash. Wash should be able to take the heat, the, the the hits, if he if he is successful with both shots. Um. No, I don't really have a choice. Oh man, trying to decide what I want to do. Hmm. Any goons are visible after shooting. Act heroic. Yeah. All right. I'm getting analysis paralysis long enough. So, Jane, what are you gonna do, buddy? We also need to like block that door before the goons come out, because they can't come out diagonally. So, even though he's been waiting to fire, we're going to go ahead and move him, the two, for his movement. One, two, on top of Wash. Wash. Then I think he's going to move again. One, two, and then stop right here. We need to block that door. And that'll move him two further. And he might take some shots, but that's okay. They're equidistant. Um, I got to figure out who's going to take them. Um, all right. So now that's it. Uh, now the next tile is a cowboy tile. So and these are two that didn't shoot. So I believe it's these two up here. That's what we're going to go with. So I guess the way we'll do it, because they are equidistant, one, two, three, four. They go with the easiest shot, but they're the same. So this guy will shoot him twice, and that guy will shoot him twice. They're both in range. And they are. They need a four or better, and plus they, they have a plus one to their roll. Okay, so one of them's a critical fail. Nice. Next one. Aha! Is another critical fail. So two missed shots on Jane. Then the other cowboy, and actually that takes uh, three to shoot. So let me make sure I move them up on their track before I get screwed up. One, two, three, one, two, three. I'm just going to pre move the other one because he's shooting twice as well. He's going to be shooting over here at Zoe. Five, that'll be a hit. And shoot again, a two, um, plus one is three, and it's four away. So that'll be a miss. So that worked out rather well. Um, I'll go ahead and put a wound marker on Zoe. And actually, Wash is going to be the next guy to go. All right. So Wash is over here with the hostage. 
So after wash, oh, look, this other cowboy is going to get to go. So he, if he wanted to be slick, he could actually move behind the building. And he's going to do that. So wash is going to spend uh, one. Well, hold on. First, he's going to spend two moments to move four. So I'll move him up two moments. So he moves one movement point. The second movement point is moving the hostage over to here. Then his third movement point, he's going to move the hostage one more spot. And then his fourth and final over there. And I think he's going to do nothing with the second action because he wants to... So I can draw a line across this obstacle into his square, but he's not next to it, so he's not going to get benefit from it. One, two, one, two, three, four, five away. So this guy can roll, I think it's plus one to shoot, and he needs a five. Oh, another critical fail. So we got lucky with the dice, um, and apparently the bad guys in this mission just can't shoot very well. Um, that's one action, and that'll cost him three. One, two, three, and then he's going to fire him again. This time he's going to hit him. He's just right about how, how good, how horrible they're rolling. <laughs> so we'll stick the wound over here on now. And that's that. And let's see, one, two, I'll move him three more. I'll move him up there. So now we should be able to react to a lot of these guys. So the next person to go is Zoe. And Zoe... Zoe has a fight skill of three. So... Do, 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 do. She, er, she has a fight bonus of plus three. And she's one, two, th four away. So she needs a four to hit him. She gets a three. Right? Yeah, a lot of you hit because she has plus three. So she can actually hit them at six away. So she moves one of them. We'll just go for the one straight ahead from her. Keep things simple. Then she will fire again with her second action. Oh, and she gets a critical fail. Um, now, Malcolm, if he was available, could use his plastic dinosaurs and give her a reroll, but he is not available. So that's that. So, Zoe, her shoot, her is to one, two, one, two. She shot twice. So now it looks like this thug is next after we remove Zoe from the sack. Uh, the thug was underneath her. Um, actually, I need to get a couple more of those thugs out because there's three of them. So every one of them is going to get to go. So this is going to be painful. So there, there's, well, not really. See, there's one here in the doorway, and he can, he can do... A brawl action with Jane. Um, Jane will get plus three to the brawl because the thug only gets plus one. And Zoe can actually assist him. Or maybe not. Now she doesn't have an assistive available on her heroic, so I don't think she can. I've already clarified that before. Alright, so this is a this is an opposed roll. Alright, woo! So I got a firefly, which is a six, he has a five, and that means he's gonna take his second move. And this dude fought me and by the bucket. Down you go. So we can remove one of these. And now the other thug's going to move, so he's going to move forward. That's the AI rules for the thugs, right? If they're not um, in brawl range, which is adjacent, then they're going to move up to three. And that actually takes three moments. One, two, three, and then it's two moments to brawl. So he's going to brawl with Jane. Come on, Jane, hold down. <laughs> Excellent. So Jane's like, two. he can't, can't set me. So that dude's taking, he's taking the blood. Now the other one, um, one, two, three, he can't actually move to get to him, so he's just going to move down. So he can't get to the door because they're all blocking. No, actually, I take that back. He can move through the room. If Jane wasn't there, he could move through his own guy and then beam the doorway. But since Jane's there and you have to go um, orthogonal to get through the door, you can't go diagonal. So he, all he can do is move down one space for his one action. Um, actually, he has to spend two actions doing it. So I tell you what, I guess he should move out of the door. One, two, three, four, five, six. He'll move closer. He'll come on out. Because at least in the next turn, then you can attack. Which would be what a real life opponent would do, right? He wouldn't just sit here like a video game. I'm stuck against the wall. Bam. I'm stuck against the wall. Bam. So it won't matter much because we're going to take that one and do that probably. Um, all right. So next up is Jane. All right, Jane, what do you do? I kind of like him blocking that door and that guy trying to punch him and he can kill himself. <laughs> so, yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. So he's still too far away to this one thug to really take an accurate shot with the weapon that he has. Had I bought the one weapon that rolled like three dice, um, he could have taken a shot at him. But this is not the case. So he's going to... Tell you what. He's going to brawl with the guy in the doorway. And he's also going to... Add two moments. Look at his card here. His brawl action costs two and then he gets a plus two. Uh, plus two more movement, uh, moments to add a die to his ball. So I really want to make sure that I take this guy out. So he's going to roll two dice, two the thugs, one die. Oh, nice. So Jane gets a six, plus his three skill, which is like nine. So this guy's one, it's automatic fail. So this guy takes another wound, and here he has one, so he goes down. No less enemy bother us. Well, he could do a good job protecting their friend. So now he's going to take a shot at this guy over here with the blood. Um, and he's one, two, three, four away. And he gets a, he gets a plus three. So he rolls three. So he can afford to be six adjusted. So that's going to wipe this dude here out. We already have blood. So that cowboy's gone. All right. And that'll actually... Oh, I need to move him. Uh, his shoots was two. He actually moved six. So one, two, three, four. He'll move over here. Two. And then we need to do the special event. So 
which there's no way we're gonna get him out without getting there. So I need to drop out the blood from my hostage. And see the subject gone, right? So I can there's one left. It's hard to know. I think that's part of why you have to have the specialized guys. It makes it a little harder. They have different abilities and boots and uh, buffs. Boots and buffs. <laughs> but it's easier to distinguish on your contract who's who. Because you can tell by the spelt. Like, uh, this guy here is a sharpshooter, obviously. Lucas Card will show a picture. What they look like. But that way you can keep track of them on here and you're not allowed to listen to stutter. How do I know which one goes to what? So, it's almost as if they thought of everything. I'm telling you, I'm really, really impressed with both the manufacturing quality of this game um, and what you get in the game for the price. It's like 50 bucks, 40 bucks. I got an amazing game here. Countless hours of fun. Fantastic sculpts and very high. Production quality as far as the paper and the card contents. So, I really I got a woody over this, let me tell you. <laughs> um, so, where were we? Uh, that was Jane's turn. Oh, I need to do the roll for the event, right? So, we're going to roll AI. Uh oh, you get the five. So, when you have five on the event, place an alert thug in a building closest to the crew trigger the event out of sight. Remove the wound token. Uh, okay, so we'll just get rid of thug. Uh, he's going to show up here out of sight. Maybe right there. And it's on camera, you can't see it. Great. All right, right there out of sight. And that was the event. So things are getting worse. So, we got to get the hell out of here. So, Malcolm is next in the turn order. Mal's trying to help Wash get to the helipad. So Mal will probably do better. One, two, three, four, five. He's just so far away. He's going to have to move and get closer. Especially with his shoot skill. Doesn't have a whole lot of buffs. Hmm. And actually, now that I'm looking, the plastic dinosaur is only, only takes effect for uh, tech tests. So shooting isn't a tech test, right? So let me get back over here and take a look at Mal. So Mal's going to spend one moment to move to one, two, and he's going to get a little closer. So I'm going to move him up a moment. Um, one, two, three, he'll be on top of the thugs. So now he's going to take a shot here at this cowboy. He gets a plus two to his roll. And that's it. Okay, he rolls a four. Nice. So he's going to hit him for a wound. And that cost him... Two, it's a heroic action. So, oh, one, two. I guess that's fine. I'd rather him go. I'd like to time it so that way nobody ends up on top of him so I can get these guys the hell out of here. So, yeah, he did a move and a shoot. So now it's up to Kaylee. Oh, I guess Kaylee, it's time for her maybe to come on out. Um, she can move three with a two-moment move. So she can go one, two, three, um, and then one, two, three. Yeah, I'm not sure that's good. One, two, three, one, two, three. Not sure I want her closer because she's kind of low on wounds. So I think she's going to come out and basically just camp right behind Mel. And that's going to be one uh, two-moment action for her. And then she's going to do nothing. The Wash will be next. And I think Wash, well, he really needs just to kind of stay put until there's Wash. Wash is behind the door here, and we've got this cowboy here with a wound. We got to get rid of him before he comes around the corner. Otherwise, um, he could be shooting the hostage. And Wash doesn't have the ability to heal, which is a bummer. So I think Wash is going to stay put and do what? He's going to do a, a waiting action, I think, where you move one ahead of your crew. So he will go on top of the thugs and everything. So that should allow everybody else to clear him out. So that means Kaylee's next again. Okay. So she'll spend two to do a... Th oh, dang it. <laughs> Come on now. Don't mess up my order. Okay little fiddly. All right, so she spends two to move three. So she's going to go one, two, three, and then she'll spend two more to go three again. One, two, three. And now she's on the helipad, and she's further away from this guy, so she's not a target anymore. I kind of like that. But I do need to move her up uh, two more moments. So she'll meet up here with Jane. 
All right. So now if we look, Malcolm is next. So Mal's next. And we already know that Mal is desperately trying. He's stuck in this gunfight with his cowboy. He's trying to take him down. I wish I had something to buff his shooting ability, but I do not. Oh, and he rolls a critical fail on his first shot. And that cost him two moments. Then he shoots again and he gets the uh, a six. So that's going to take this dude out. That was his second blood. And we need to move Mal four spaces up here. So one, two, three, four. So he did his job. Thank you, Mal. So now Zoe, she's next on the on the list before all these guys get to go. So that's unfortunate. She's not gonna be able to take everybody down. Best she can do is take out this cowboy. Doesn't really matter. They both probably I'd say the melee guys are higher priority because there's not a range thing going on, right? Mm, maybe the cowboy. So she's going to shoot at the cowboy, which is one, two, three, four away. And Zoe has a plus three. She could spend an extra moment to get an extra, like a plus four. One, two, three, four. Uh, minus three, so she gets a two, plus three is a five, yeah. Hmm, so she that would be a waste for her. So she's going to roll, she gets a five, okay. So she puts a blood on him, then she's going to fire again, she gets a three. Plus her three equals six, and he's only four away, so that is down. That cowboy's gone down. So now I actually need to... Take these cowboys out of the lineup. All we have are the thugs, which I believe there's one there. And is there another one over here? No, nope, I guess both thugs are right here. Yeah, you know, the cowboy marker, that's what we'll go with. Okay. So that was Zoe shooting twice, and that costs her two moments. So one, two, three, four. Come, comes on up there. Quite a gunfight going on. So now Wash is next. You can see here he's in the top of the order. So now he's going to try to make his getaway. He's not going to make it this turn, obviously. So first thing he does is um, he's going to spend two moments. He gets four movement points. So he moves up here. Two moments. It's four movement points, so it costs him one to move this guy here. Or hold on. One to move him there. Then he moves here for two. Oh, you're off screen. Damn it. Let me back up so you can see what I'm doing. So he spends one movement to go there. Anywhere adjacent to his square. One point to go there. That's two. Then he comes here for three. Then he can move this guy here for four. And that would be his one action. So then he can spend two more moments to get four more movement points. So now he'll go one, move this guy up two, three, four. So he's almost there. Next turn he can pull it off and that's two more moments for him. So he's all the way up on six on that segment. See, so you can see it. I just moved it here. So it's going to be a while till he gets to go, but it is what it is. So now we go to the thug is the last person here on our initiative track. <laughs> Notice I've called it like 10,000 things within the course of this game. I, I, I'm not calling it what the game calls it. <laughs> it's a sequence marker. I don't know. Initiative just, it, it's what we're familiar with. It's within our gamer terminology, so to speak. So the thug here is gonna move up one with one action, then he's gonna go ahead and attack uh, Jane. So that's a one, uh, that's an opposed roll. So Jane got a five, they got a crit. 
uh, a critical miss. They got to fail. So that means that dude's taking a wound. So I'll put a blood droplet over that to remind me. He's already done his two actions. That'll move him up five. So he'll get to go again before wash. So now, even though this says sharpshooter on my initiative track, let me replace this. That's because I only had so many thugs out. So it's the next thug. So this thug is going to spend one action, and he's going to come on up to Jane because he's closest. Then he's going to perform his attack. I can't see what that is. So I rolled a six, and they rolled a two. Boy, I'm rolling hot today. So this thug takes a wound. So I don't know why these thugs think they can beat Jane up because it is not working for them. <laughs> They're rolling like I would roll if I was trying to beat me, right? Anyhow, um, so that'll cost him two for the brawl and three for the move. So one, two, three, four, five. It'll bring him right up with the other thug. Okay. So the next here in line we can see is Kaylee. And Kaylee... I think I need to double check my goal here. Um, the hostage and all the crew are on the landing pad before time runs out. So Kaylee is already on the landing pad. She's not going to do anything. She um, She's going to go and wait and go one ahead. Which, let me switch cam so you can see it. So that's going to bring her right up here to spot seven. And we don't want to go to this next thing. We really want to prevent that. So hopefully I can get the rest of the crew there. Um, Jane's pretty fast. He can go four. He'll need like two turns to do it. Two moments. So that's four. He might be able to get out if I can shoot this other guy down. All right. So it is Jane's turn. And the funny thing is Jane is Jane's kind of stuck. And he's the guy that we got to get out. But he can break away from these guys. But in order to do so, he has to do a brawl with each one of them. So I think I'm going to do that because it might actually kill them. Um, what happens is you basically do a brawl. And then if you're successful, you have a choice whether to stay put, give them the wound, or back up a square. That's how you disengage without taking a wound. If you lose the brawl, then you stay right where you're at. Or no, you, you get to move away, but you take a damage. So I think that's what we're going to do. Either way, it's kind of a win-win for me. So Jane is going to... He has to basically spend a brawl action, which is two moments. Where's the die? Can't see it. They rolled a crit. Fail. And I rolled a five. So that's going to allow him to move over here and break away for one. And instead of giving him a wound, he's allowed to break away. And I guess he probably has to do it with the other guy, too. So with this guy, this guy rolls a four and he gets a two, but Jane has a plus three, so that'll give him five, but the other guy has a plus one, that'll give him five, so it's a tie, so they both take a wound, but I'm not going to give him a wound so I can break away, so Jane will end up, I believe, taking a wound, so I will put that on his character board, he has two out of five, so... And that whole thing basically took him two moments. The move action that you get to do one space is free, but you have to pay for the brawl. He moves two. So now he can do a straight up movement, which in heroic is two moments for him to move four. Okay, one, two, three, and four. Yes, he'll be right there if everybody else can move. So that'll be his turn done. So now, now we're looking at Zoe. 
And Zoe, actually, she's pretty slow. She can only move two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She's eight away. I'm trying to map her out here. She's eight away. So I think she's going to have to take the same risk that um, he did as well. Now, hers, she's a little faster and only takes one moment. So she can spend two moments and go four. All right. I think she's going to go ahead and brawl with this guy. And then just take him down. Yeah. All right. So he rolls a five. He has a plus one. But she has a five. But she has a plus three. So she's going to give him his second wound. Take this thug down. And they were fighting to hold this hostage down to the last guy. And that would cost her... Ooh, she's pretty fast. Only one moment to brawl. So that's nice for her. Nice to see that that was her ability is like she's she's tough. She, like she's good at fighting and shooting, but she's also fast. So now she's going to move. For one moment, she gets two spaces. One, two. That's off cam. So she moved from here to there. And we'll move her up. One more moment. Okay, so now I'm gonna finish my turn. Now is gonna go ahead and one, two, and the hospital. I'm gonna spend one, one, two, and two. So I'm gonna go ahead here. Now it's gonna go one, two, one moment. He's gonna move the hospital here, the second moment. And I'm gonna move one and move one. Yeah, he can't bother me. So, hmm, I'm gonna work out. He's fast, so don't watch. One, two, three. I'm gonna go right here. We'll go right here. We actually have the next guy in. That's what he has. He's fast. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and spend another single moment. so he deleted we are going to deal with his power to our eyes uh, both Jean and Zoe actually she's thinking Jean is up next so I was right in my time Jean didn't have to do all action you're going to have to blood to the loop okay. uh, the real part of there was working up around so Jean had to blood in order to uh, get one he just didn't say okay but that's weird he can't throw it away I think that's okay I don't know just because I'm over the issue so Jean had to blood to work away and have all action again ruling his eyeball his balls too then he can spend a moment to move forward so oh, such. that whole thing is really not damn it we're going to get some of this. So, I'm going to do it. He's right. He's going to go ahead and spend his two moments and after his brawl, bringing there to the four, which I'm sorry, it's from the review. So, I'm going to do here. One, two, three, four is not bad. That's Gene. Watch that. Watch right here. He spends two, four, and he needs that much. He comes up and not the thug. He'll just and he'll get one for two. So, one, two, or he can't stop there, though. So, he'll try to go one, two, and then one, two. Two moments. So, we pulled off. You can see, we're all one by one. Uh, Tie left. We did this. I was doing one by nine. And so that's it. They escaped. Everybody got to the helipad. So let's see how we did. Um, we basically have one initiative segment left because nobody's on it. So get paid. Grateful for the rescue. Your war buddy is happy to share some of the spoils of the endeavor, which landed them in hot water. If the crew successfully complete the job, roll a die for each wound the hostage has remaining. So he's got two wounds remaining. Multiply the total result by 100 and get paid that amount. Okay. So <laughs> we roll a two. So we roll a two. We get $200. So let me grab $200 bills. Boy, we're not going to get paid much. All right. Um, count disgruntled faces as zero and firefly faces as six. Do not roll additional uh, exploding dice. In addition, in addition, take the credits tucked under any unused timeline segment. So what I didn't tell you guys is that under each segment is a $1,000 bill. So a um, 1000 or is it $500? Uh, no, it's 1000 So that means there's one segment left. They get a $1,000 bill for this last segment that we didn't uncover. The one that they're on doesn't count over here, up here. 
Um, because, hold on. In addition, if the credit's tucked under any unused, for example, a job ends with a crew in front of moment 28, the crew would take credits from the fourth and fifth segments. 28. Yeah, that's not, that's not, we're on 39. Or 49. Yeah, that was the fifth segment. I got rid of one of them. I laid them over there. Yep. Okay. Sorry. So they get the thousand dollars. If now, um, if no cowboys have been down, take an extra thousand, and that's not true, because we took them all out. As a matter of fact, one of the things I I keep screwing up is when I kill these guys is to put corpse tokens down. But everybody was already aggroed, so I don't think it really mattered much. Um, the one thing is there is cases where they get reinforcements and yeah I may have screwed that up I have to re read into that so continuing on here at the end of the job you may also sell any intel tokens the crew's possession ooh for 500 each well we had to use every single intel token in order to eliminate all of these buildings to find our hostage we didn't really have much of a choice so all the buildings yeah so let's count up our money and see how we did well we had a thousand we had a five hundred dollar crate so that's 15 16 17 18 19 20. i also had um four can't really see them. There we go. Four glass beads over by Mal. That was what was left over um, from our earnings. You, your starting money. So we'll add that into the pot as well. So that's 15, 16, 17. So that's $2,400 is how we finished out. Oh, and just shy of really doing well. Um, at 2600 we would have done pretty good. But we got twenty four. Not exactly respectable, but at least we won't go hungry. <laughs> so, remember, we um, I may not have mentioned it, but we started off with 3,000 credits. So, we had to buy some equipment. So, when we go into the next mission, we're going to get, I believe, to keep our equipment, and we're going to have $2,400 or $2, to start off. So, we should be able to beef up our weapons a bit for the next mission. So, that's it, man. Um telling you uh this was a blast it was a load of fun it was extremely thematic it's the next best thing to watching a new uh firefly episode for sure i sincerely enjoyed it i'm definitely going to be uh firing up the second mission as soon as possible more videos with the gameplays when the expansions come out they're going to be i think they're currently in pre-order for the next two expansions i'm going to order those asap and those will be on my channel as well look forward to that so if you made it this long through the video um you're probably already subscribed to my channel if you are not what is wrong with you dude subscribe so you'll get notifications when the next video comes out right so make sure when you click that subscribe button you click the little bell so you get notifications to youtube or through email however you set it up um that hey Scott's put out another video. I got to check it out when I get a chance. You don't have to watch it right away. Sometimes you can just put it to your watch later playlist and check it out in your own your own good time. So, till next time guys, quadruple pieces out. <laughs>